The Industrial Revolution, which took place between the 18th and 19th centuries, was a period during which predominantly agrarian rural societies in Europe and America became industrialized and urbanized. The revolution was born in Britain due to its abundance of coal and iron ore. Britain was also politically stable and the world's leading colonial power and colonies served as a source for raw materials and as a marketplace. Prior to the Industrial Revolution, families often produced most of their own food, clothing, and other basic necessities. In cities, merchandise was made in shops, much like those of medieval craftsmen, and manufacturing was strictly regulated by the guilds and by the government. These goods were high quality, but were in limited supply and too costly for the average individual. Alternatively, some cloth merchants would buy wool from the sheep owners, have it spun into yarn by farmers' wives, and take it to the country weavers to be made into textiles. These country weavers who manufactured the cloth more cheaply than city craftsmen because they provided raw materials from their own gardens or small farms. This is known to some as the putting out system. This system gave the merchant a large supply of manufactured articles at a low price and provided employment for every member of a craft worker's family and gave jobs to skilled workers who had no capital to start businesses for themselves. There were also new ideas in English which aided the, the movement. One of these was the doctrine of laissez-faire, a lack of government intervention in an industry popularized by British economist Adam Smith in his work, The Wealth of Nations. English government left business free to adopt the new methods of production which were best suited to them. This is how and why the Industrial Revolution came about. The Industrial Revolution was characterized by the numerous innovations and advances in technology and industry. One of the major developments was the steam-powered engine. While other versions had come before it, the James Watt steam engine developed in 1776 was the breakthrough. Watt took the Newcomen steam engine and made a number of improvements to it, adding a separate condenser and later a double piston, increasing the efficiency of the engine many times over. These improvements allowed it to be used in almost any location, helping pave the way towards the widespread introduction of factories. Factories replaced the putting out method as the predominant system of production. Widespread use of factories began after the advent of the mechanized cotton spinner. These advances in technology and machinery meant that unskilled workers doing one task at a time could be utilized in large numbers to outpace skilled artisans. Factories were used initially in the textile industry, but rapidly expanded into other areas such as machinery, crafts, and weapons production. In 1784, Henry Court revolutionized the process of iron production, replacing human labor with mechanization. Court developed a furnace with mechanized rollers, as well as a different heating method to stir out impurities in crude iron. His innovations led to massive growth in the production of iron in Britain, quadrupling overall production in the 20 years following the invention of his furnace. The innovations of the revolution kept coming. Next came the ever-so-helpful calculator in 1835 from Charles Babbage. The calculator was used only for banking, simply to count how much money they have, how much a person owns, etc. So the calculator was just as useful as it was back then as it is today. Then there was the invention of the Coca-Cola drink in 1886 by John Pemberton. Coca-Cola was sold everywhere, and it quickly became the best refreshment drink in the world. And it was known for the pause that refreshes. Of course, it was the best drink at the time and the most famous because it really didn't have any other competitor. Then lastly, the great telephone from the well-known Alexander Graham Bell and Antonio in 1876. The telephone may travel in time or reality, and it was said that no matter where a person was on planet Earth, the telephone would made it seem like they, that person was literally right next door. In addition to calling a friend, back then the telephone was mainly used for calling the police, or worse, the fire department. The remarkability of the Industrial Revolution lies within the incredible strides that were made through various innovations as mentioned earlier. Many of the advancements made during the time of the Industrial Revolution had a ripple effect on society that can still be felt even to this day. While it may seem unrelated on the surface, many of the positive advancements of the 19th century would pave the way to the devastating effects of World War I in the early 20th century. The war to end all wars was one of the bloodiest ever to have been fought simply because of the new forms of technology. Major early 19th century innovations such as locomotives and extensive railroads in Europe made it much faster to transport soldiers along with weapons and supplies. People during the early industrial revolution began working with iron on a large scale and mastered metallurgy which would lead to advanced weapons that replaced the archaic artillery of the decades prior. From an economic standpoint, the blossoming economies led to increased feelings of nationalism and competition between European nations. This only intensified as the 20th century grew closer. In turn, people in a number of countries felt inspired to fight for their country and maintain their sense of dominance once the World War was at their doorstep. As we can see, the Industrial Revolution's advancements in technology had vast ripple effects on the world then and now that were equally positive and negative.